Congratulations if you just picked up an iPhone 14 Pro. Now this phone is a lot of more different than the iPhone 14, so we're making a separate video for it, but this is a great iPhone. It's going to last you a very long amount of time. So let's get into basically how you can use this iPhone. Now, first of all, on the outside, we have a beautiful 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED panel, and it is a very good panel. We now have a little bit of a change. There's no longer a notch. There's a dynamic island display, and I'll show you exactly how to go ahead and maneuver through that and use that as well. Now, that is it for the front. On the left side, we do have our mute switch, so we can quickly silence our phone if we want to, the volume up and down buttons. We no longer have a SIM card tray here, which is totally fine. I've already made a few tutorials on how to convert your current SIM card to an eSIM, so I'll leave those linked in the description so you can watch those videos instead. We have our charging port down here, speakers on the sides, or a speaker on the side. We, ha we have an antenna band right here. We also have our power button, so this will allow us to go ahead and power on and off our phone. We can also power it on for the first time, and it also doubles as a Siri button as well. You can click one down to go ahead and shut your phone off. On the back, we have our frosted glass back, which is beautiful. We also have, have our camera setup. So this is a wide ultra-wide and telephoto lens, and we have a LiDAR sensor as well. Now, the LiDAR sensor will take use of different augmented reality type of things that we can utilize. That's actually a really nice little sensor that they threw in here. Now that is pretty much it on the outside. Now we still have things like our MagSafe capability or IP certification, so this phone is waterproof and different things like that. We also have a new emergency SOS satellite mode on this phone as well. So that is a really cool thing. Basically, you can you know point your phone to a specific satellite and it will actually be able to go ahead and I think we can receive calls and send messages and things like that. So that is a really cool feature that Apple threw in here. I'm not going to talk about that in this video because that is a little bit more complex to go ahead and kind of maneuver through, but I will make other videos you know about that and leave those in the description as well. Now turning on our phone for the first time, as I mentioned, you can go ahead and hold your you know, power button on the side here, and you can also go ahead and you know tap the screen on it if you really want to. I've already gotten a few applications for the dynamic island thing set up, but when you tap your display on for the first time, you should be able to see your display come on like this. Now within iOS 16, things are a little bit different. So we still have our toggles at the bottom, so you can quickly toggle on the flashlight if you want to, the camera right here, the time, the date, all this other stuff. You can quickly you know, swipe down from the top right if you want to get into your control center, which we'll talk about in a second. And you should be able to see all your notifications come up at the bottom here. So you can quickly sift through all your notifications, you can swipe them through and everything. But within iOS 16, we have the capability of customizing our lock screen. And we can do that by tapping on the lock screen or holding it down like that. And now what we can do is we can customize it. So what we can do here is under the bottom, we can go and click the customize button, or we can click the plus button to add a new wallpaper. So what we can do here is for the time being, we'll just choose a different wallpaper like this one. And we can go ahead and add widgets if we want to. We can change the time up here if we really want to, or not change the time, but change the font of the time as well. So there's a lot of different things you can do here, but most of us know you can add widgets as well. So if you want to add a certain widget, like a battery widget right here, or if you want to add another widget, like a you know weather widget, there's a lot of customizability here. So I'd recommend you to get used to it and actually customize your phone to your liking as well. Do keep in mind though, the more customizations you add, the more battery life it may suck out. But regardless, in this case, we'll just keep our wallpaper stock like it is. And now what we can do is we can swipe up from the bottom and we can come straight into our home screen. Now our home screen is built up very similar to other phones. If you've ever used any other phone before, the layout is the same. We have the time and our quick toggles up in the top right. We have our widgets if we have them. All of our app icons are right here. We have a search button at the bottom now, which is new within iOS 16, and we have our dock. The dock is always persistent, so you can add applications here, but you can swipe between the different pages, but the dock is always going to stay the same. Now at the very end, you'll see all the applications that you have categorized. You can also swipe down and see all your applications like this, which is really cool. So if not all applications will come up on this panel. So most of them will come up here. So you can just kind of see them here and kind of maneuver around that way as well. Now I will go ahead and showcase to you the main way you're going to interact with your phone, which is gestures. So if we go and make our way over to our settings application, if you want to go back home, you basically see this little bar at the bottom. You want to grab this bar and kind of bring it up like this. That is the easiest way to go and maneuver through your phone. So you can kind of get used to it. But gestures are really cool because they also allow you to go ahead and swipe between different applications. So let's say you want to get into the app store as well, and you want to go back into settings. Well, instead of swiping out and going back here, all you have to do basically is just, you know, if you're in the app store, you can grab this bar and swipe it to the side like this. You can swipe between your application just like that. So that's another really cool thing. 
but you can also get into your multitasking panel by swiping up like this and stopping about, you know, maybe like two swipes up or something. And what you want to do here is you can see all the applications that you currently have open on your phone. Now, it's not, you don't have to close out of all of them if you don't want to, but if you want to go ahead and just kind of clean out your phone a little bit, you can close out of those applications like that, and that can help kind of clean things out in the background if you really want to, but iPhones automatically do that by default. Now, within our phone and our home screen, like I said before, we do already have our app icons and everything associated. If you want to delete app icons or home screen, you know, widgets, all you have to do is go and hold down on a widget like this. You can go and click remove stack. If you want to go ahead and add a widget, all you have to do is hold down on an empty spot. You can see that little plus icon on the top left. All you have to do is click there and you'll find all sorts of other widgets available, which is really nice. So in this case, we'll just go and add our like battery icon, whatever, we'll just add this one. And you should be able to see that one right there. Now with these app icons, it's kind of the same thing. So let's say we don't like our maps here. Well, what you can do is hold down on that app icon and you can go ahead and remove the application if you want to, or you can go and click edit home screen, which is right there. And you can go and tap and hold on this little icon like this and you can move it around. And here you can go and move it to a different page if you want to. And that's another really cool thing that this phone has. You know, all iPhones have had that since like iOS 7 or something. So that's another cool thing that you can do on your phone. And you can go ahead and at this point, customize your phone and your app icons, whichever way you want to. So you should have a good idea of this specific pages. Now on the left side, you have all your widgets if you want to. I typically, honestly, on my side, I don't really ever use this ever, but it's still cool if you want to have the widgets here. You can delete them if you want to. I'd recommend deleting some of them, but that's another cool thing you have on this side. Now, swiping back out, you'll basically come back to your home screen. Now, like I said, if you want to see your notifications and everything, you can always swipe from the top left, basically down, and you will basically find the same way that you saw your lock screen. So it's pretty much built the same way, but swiping down from the top right will get you into your control center. Now here is where you can kind of control things a little bit better. Now most of these you can force touch into. So you can tap and hold and you'll basically get more custom, you'll basically see more into that specific toggle. So up here you can go and turn your phone into airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth toggles, you can configure those. If you're listening to music, you'll basically see that come up on the top right, which is cool. Your auto rotate if you want to turn that off, screen mirroring, uh, focus mode is basically do not disturb mode now, so you have that capability here too. And you have your brightness you can mess with here. You can turn the sound on and off or higher and lower right there too, which is really cool. And that's basically everything in this toggle. Now, you can customize these toggles in the settings, which we'll talk about in a second. Actually, we'll talk about that right now. So within settings, you can click here. And this is a very important application that I'd recommend every single person to get used to. So here up top, you'll see your name. Clicking here will basically bring you into your iCloud settings, which is really cool. Now, swiping back out, you'll see a bunch of other things down here. You basically have all your airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth toggles here. You have your notification settings, and all these are just different settings you can configure. So I'd recommend getting used to these because, like I said, you're going to be using them a lot. Now, under general, one of the first things that I recommend doing it whenever you buy an iPhone 14 Pro is to update your phone. So click software update there and download and install the latest update on your iPhone 14 Pro. Because if you don't, that can honestly give you a weirder experience on your device. Now, under control center, like I showed you before, you can go ahead and add different control center toggles to the top if you want to. So if I wanted to add like a music recognition toggle, well, it'll be added up here by clicking that plus button and it'll be added right there too, which is really cool. In this case, I'll just go and delete it, but you have that ability as well. And like I said, there's tons of other options here. So what I'd recommend doing is just scrolling through here and pretty much getting used to this specific toggle and getting used to the settings because there's a lot of things here. And I have already made separate videos explaining the application, explaining the settings app in, in its entirety. So if you want to watch those, I'll leave those linked in the description as well. Now swiping back out, we come back to our specific home screen. Now with the 14 Pro, we have a lot more capability than the standard 14s, and that's with the dynamic island display. Now with the dynamic island display, essentially we have the ability of utilizing it a little bit further. So I have my Spotify application here, and in this case, basically anytime you have any sort of application, not every app is utilizing the dynamic island display right now, but the ones that do, the basic layout is this. Essentially, if you're playing a song or something and you swipe up, you can see how the application kind of goes up into the island display. So you'll know an application is suitable if it goes up. If I open up iMovie, for example, you see how the application will just swipe out. It'll just kind of hide back in the background. Well, applications that utilize that, you know, dynamic island display will swipe up. Now here, what you can see with any application that'll utilize it, you can basically see that it'll show you, I guess, the art cover here and the music right there. Well, if you want to go ahead and get more into this information, you can tap on that display like this, and I guess it'll open up that application like this, but I guess you can also, I guess some other applications have the ability of just opening up that song. So it looks like it's still a little finicky for some people, 
but I know with Apple Music and some other applications too, you can go ahead and pretty much whatever, whenever you see something with a dynamic island display, you can go ahead and pretty much just tap on it and you should be able to get more information from it. Another example was screen recording. So if you go ahead and screen record something, right, you can see the dynamic island display will go ahead and change up. So now it will go ahead and screen record. Well, just like what I said before, if you want to get more information from it, tap on that dynamic island display and you will see more information. So even though this isn't like a music application, I'm still able to click on it and still gain more information from it. So that is the main thing. With that dynamic island display, it gives you more information and you can tap on it to gain more information from it. So with that being understood, you can pretty much go into any application and then pretty much kind of utilize that dynamic island display if you actually need it. So it's growing. There's going to be a lot more applications that utilize it. And I'm actually really happy for it. So just get used to tapping it and then kind of, you know, seeing it from there. But most of the time it should be closed with a lot of different applications that are out there. Now that is, those are pretty much the main things, but I want to end it off with this. If you have any questions at all, if you're ever wondering what certain things are, if you're trying to download an app or whatever, you can always go to two places, one YouTube, Google, whatever, but there's also that search button here. You can always swipe down and get into spotlight search and you can always search for applications or contacts or phone numbers, whatever the case is, you can always search for it. Again, you can tap down here or you can swipe from the bottom and basically into the same panel. Or what you can do is click into settings. If there's a specific settings or thing that you want to go ahead and kind of configure as well, there's always that search button here. You can always search for those types of things as well. Again, don't ask it a question. You can ask Siri a question, but and you can always activate Siri by swiping and holding that, that side button here, turning on Siri, and then pretty much going from there. So that is pretty much how to utilize your iPhone for the most part, your iPhone 14 Pro. You made a great choice. I think it's going to last a long time, and hopefully you enjoy your experience. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button on me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.